of engineering poured into aerodynamics, performance, and safety. This was the car of tomorrow, a 2007 design, most recognized for the separated wing on the back. It's a relic now thanks to some keen scientific study of driver safety. My name is Daniel Honeycutt and I'm an engineer with NASCAR. Here at the Research Center we look at anything we can do to improve safety, competition on the track, and then uh, to improve cost. The stock cars change year after year. Um, the seats have evolved. Uh, they get safer and safer year after year. The seat belts, uh, some of our window nets that protect the driver here. Um, one thing that uh, we've worked a lot on is the, the roof flaps. Uh, they were installed in the cars in the early 90s. In the past, uh, we observed, and I even observed this as a, as a kid, as a fan, when the cars spin, at times they would become airborne. Rusty Wallace's spectacular crash in Talladega in 1993 made the industry take pause and standardize roof flaps for all cars. But when the car spins around and then the air flows over the roof, the roof flaps then pop open. These flaps reduce that lift over the roof of the car and keep the car on the ground. Nearby, a group of scientists at the Motorsports Research Building at the University of North Carolina were tracking the issue. A rash of crashes were being logged after design change. The flow over the cars became interesting to us when NASCAR changed to the car of tomorrow. And the car of tomorrow was supposed to be better because it had a wing on the back. This model was equipped with roof flaps. But these weren't working very well uh, when they switched to the wing car. To decipher that mystery, this team used water instead of air. A lot of people don't even realize that water and air are both fluids and in fact act in the same way. So this is the UNC Charlotte Water Channel. It's the fifth largest in the nation and it has a one meter by one meter test section that flows one meter per second. This water channel holds 17,000 gallons of water. We're mounting a model that has the wing in the tunnel in order to look at it when the car is traveling backwards. And this would happen, for instance, if a car spins during a race, gets bumped or anything like that, and we would call this extreme yaw. Extreme yaw is a scientific term, but really, we would call that backwards. The models go into the tank upside down because this allows us to look at the flow over the car unobstructed. Are we in the right place here? Yep. Running backwards in the tunnel. Centered on the laser sheet? Centered. What we do is we put particles inside of the flow that follow the flow, and then we image that with cameras and lasers. In this case, what we're using are hollow glass spheres that are coated in silver. So these are tiny particles, they're about 50 microns in diameter, uh, and they follow the flow. And these reflect the light, which allows the camera to see them. So what we're looking at here, this is the wing car in backwards. This is the raw data, these are the images we take. So in this case, the flow is going this direction, backwards over the car. We had two laser pulses, and you can see between one time step to the next, this particle field moving. So here you can see why we're using a transparent model, because we have to get laser light in and around all these places on a car, and normally you would just get a shadow. But in this case, the laser light can actually pass through the model, so we can even image in the wake behind the car where normally the laser light would be blocked. And if we then take the process data from this, these images, we can actually get the velocity field throughout the entire image. And what we're looking at here is the wake coming over this wing. And all of a sudden, there's this separation over the rear wing, and the separation creates low pressure, which now lifts the back of this car up in the air, and that creates our flipping problem. And furthermore, what we can see is that the flow actually reattaches to the roof. And this is where the roof flaps are, and we were hoping to have the low pressure over the roof flaps, because that would pull them up and keep the car on the ground. Let's go ahead and put the spoiler model in. So here, if we look at the results for the spoiler car, we can see that this low pressure region extends just over the back of the roof flap, and that low pressure is able to pull these flaps up into the air, keep the car on the ground the way it's intended to. Well, what we've learned is that the wing cars don't allow the roof flaps to function properly, and that lets the cars flip up into the air. So in the best safety interest of NASCAR and the, the whole sport, we recommend going back to the spoiler to allow those roof flaps to function properly and keep the drivers on the ground. Today, it's an industry-wide change. Yes, we're doing science, but we're doing science that saves lives. 